This video features the installation of our street kit. However, kits are available in different configurations based on the torque being produced at the crankshaft and your style of driving. In this video, we will be installing a new ACT Performance Street Clutch and Street Light Flywheel. While this video provides the basics on how to switch out a clutch, it is no way intended to replace a factory service manual. The installation procedure will be the same except for the disc being used. Our kit lineup for this application are as follows. VW9 HDSS Spring Centered Street Kit VW9 HD G6 Six Pad Spring Centered Race Kit Disconnect the battery and remove the protective sleeve. Unfasten and remove the battery hold down bracket. Lift the battery up and out of the engine compartment. Undo the clamp and remove the air intake hose from the air box. Disconnect the vacuum hose from the air filter housing. Unbolt and remove the air intake housing cover located in the front of the engine compartment. Remove the air guide upper section. Carefully remove the air filter housing from the engine compartment. Free up the wiring harness from the battery tray, then unbolt and remove the battery tray. Under the vehicle, remove the splash guard. Loosen the hose clamps and remove the rubber air hose. Disconnect the electrical connections located under the starter. Remove the mounting hardware for the lower portion of the air guide pipe. In the engine compartment, remove the air intake hose. Cover the inlet to prevent any foreign objects from accidentally entering. Loosen the clamp at the front of the air guide pipe and then remove the hardware attaching it to the engine. Free any wiring that may be attached to it or that may be in the way, then remove the air guide pipe from the vehicle. Remove the bracket from over the starter and then remove the lower starter bolt. Unfasten the plastic cover on top of the starter and disconnect the electrical connection. Unbolt and remove the battery cable from the starter followed by the ground cable. Now unfasten and remove the top starter bolt, then remove the starter from the vehicle. Starting with the horizontal cable, remove the lock washer from the transmission selector lever and then remove the cable from the pin. For the vertical cable, simply pry it carefully off the selector pin. Unfasten and remove the nut and two bolts attaching the bracket to the transmission. Move the cable and bracket assembly out of the way. 
Remove both driver and passenger side front wheel and tire assemblies. Starting on the passenger side, unbolt and move the suspension level control system out of the way. Unfasten the sway bar end link from both the passenger and driver side and remove them from the sway bar. Now on the driver's side, unbolt and move the suspension level control system out of the way. Continuing on the driver's side, remove the three nuts from the ball joint at the bottom of the control arm. Move to the passenger side and again remove the three nuts from the ball joint at the bottom of the control arm. On the driver's side, remove the bolts attaching the drive axle to the flange on the transmission. Secure the hub and axle out of the way as much as possible with a tie strap or something similar. On the passenger side, remove the axle bolt and then pull the hub assembly from the axle. Secure the hub out of the way with a tie strap or something similar. Remove the bolts attaching the drive axle to the flange on the transfer case, which is also called the bevel box, and then remove the axle from under the vehicle. Unbolt and remove the axle heat shield. Remove the bolt attaching the drive shaft flex disc heat shield to the side of the transfer case and then remove the bolt on the back of the transfer case which also is securing the heat shield. Now you can remove the heat shield. Unfasten the plug at the bottom of the transmission and drain the oil. Reinstall the drain plug and torque it to 22 foot-pounds. Unfasten and remove the transmission support bolts and then remove the transmission support from under the vehicle. Remove the bolts from the front of the drive shaft. Unfasten and remove the oxygen sensor from the front section of the exhaust. Unbolt the front and rear clamps of the exhaust mid pipe and remove the mid pipe from under the vehicle. Remove the center heat shield from under the vehicle. Before removing the drive shaft, if not already marked, make sure to mark the flex disc and the output flange so that upon installation they can be indexed in the same position. Unfasten the drive shaft center support bracket and lower the drive shaft enough to allow the flex disc to free itself from the output flange pilot.
Then remove the bolt inside the transfer case securing the inner shaft. This is accessible through the center of the axle flange. This step required the use of a special tool that we were able to make ourselves. However, you may have to source one from your local VW dealership. Remove the bolts securing the transfer case to the transmission. Separate the transfer case from the transmission and secure it up and out of the way with a tie strap or something similar. Remove the engine cover. Install an appropriate engine support bridge and brace the engine in position. Remove the upper bell housing bolts. Remove the driver's side lower front wheel housing liner and air duct. Unbolt and remove the lower transmission mount. Disconnect the master cylinder supply hose and plug the hose to prevent the hydraulic fluid from escaping. We use the vacuum plug for this. Now remove the bolts securing the upper transmission support to the transmission housing and then remove the upper transmission support from the vehicle. Place the support under the transmission. Remove the lower bell housing bolts and then remove the transmission from the vehicle. Unbolt and remove the old pressure plate and disc. Unbolt and remove the old flywheel. With the addition of using an ACT clutch and flywheel, it is recommended that the hydraulic restrictor be removed from the bleeder assembly. Unclip and remove the bleeder assembly from the concentric slave cylinder. With a pick or something similar, push the restrictor out of the bleeder housing. Now unclip and remove the bleeder valve from the housing. Reinstall the bleeder valve onto the housing, making sure to re-engage the clip holding it in place. Replace the concentric slave cylinder using the new one provided with your clutch and flywheel kit. And then install the bleeder assembly onto the concentric slave cylinder.
Lightly coat the input shaft spines with the purple ceram loop included with your kit. Slide the disc onto the input shaft and work the ceram loop into the splines. Then remove the disc and wipe off any excess loop to prevent contamination of the clutch disc. Mount the flywheel using new flywheel attachment bolts included with your ACT clutch and flywheel kit. Torque the bolts to 44 foot-pounds in a star pattern. Then mark the bolts and tighten an additional 90 degrees also in a star pattern. Make sure to clean the friction surface area with some sort of non-petroleum based cleaner. Before installing the pressure plate, make sure to clean the friction surface area with some sort of non-petroleum based cleaner. Set the disc in position and use the alignment tool to hold it in place. Now set the pressure plate in position over the disc and install the bolts. Tighten the bolts in a star pattern and torque them to 24 foot-pounds. Remove the alignment tool. Lift the transmission back into place and install all the bell housing bolts snugly. Install the upper transmission support and then the hardware for the upper transmission support and upper transmission mount. Torque the upper transmission support bolts to 44 foot-pounds and then tighten an additional 90 degrees. Then torque the upper transmission mount bolts to 44 foot-pounds and tighten an additional 90 degrees. Now torque the bell housing bolts to 59 foot-pounds. Install the lower transmission mount. In order to line up the bolts with the holes, you may have to remove the engine support bridge so the engine and transmission assembly can be moved. Torque the two smaller bolts to 36 foot-pounds, then tighten an additional 90 degrees. Torque the large bolt to 95 foot-pounds, then tighten an additional 90 degrees. into the bleeder assembly, making sure to engage the retaining clips. Install the transfer case back into the transmission. Torque the bolts to 29 foot-pounds, then tighten an additional 90 degrees. Make sure to install the bolt inside the transfer case, securing the inner shaft. Torque this bolt to 24 foot-pounds. Install the transmission support and torque the bolts to 29 foot-pounds. Install the passenger side drive axle to the flange on the transfer case. Torque the hardware in two steps. First to 7 foot-pounds and then the final torque to 29 foot-pounds. Install the axle heat shield and tighten the hardware.
Lift the drive shaft into position, making sure the flex disc engages the output flange pilot, and be sure to align the marks on the flex disc and output flange made during disassembly. Install the hardware hand tight. Install the bolts for the drive shaft center support bracket and torque them to 18 foot pounds. Now torque the hardware for the drive shaft to 44 foot pounds. Place the heat shield over the drive shaft flex disc back into position and then install the hardware attaching it to both the side and the rear of the transfer case. Install the center heat shield. Install the exhaust mid pipe into position and tighten the clamps. Install the oxygen sensor back into the exhaust and tighten. If disconnected, reconnect the electrical plug located at the bottom of the oil pan. Remove the transmission fill plug and add the factory recommended fluid and amount. Reinstall the plug and torque it to 22 foot-pounds. On the driver's side, install the drive axle to the flange on the transmission. Torque the hardware in two steps, first to 7 foot-pounds and then the final torque to 29 foot-pounds. Install the starter back into position and plug in any electrical connections. Torque the starter bolts to 59 foot-pounds. Place the shifter cable and bracket assembly back into position, then install and torque the bolts and nut to 14 foot-pounds. Install the vertical cable by simply pressing it into the selector lever pin. Install the horizontal cable by placing it on the selector lever pin and then securing it with the lock washer. Install the air guide pipe back into position. Tighten the clamp, the hardware attaching it to the engine, and the lower mounting hardware. Install the bracket over the starter. Install the rubber air hose back into position and tighten the clamps. Place the driver's side ball joint back into position in the control arm and torque the bolt to 29 foot-pounds. Then tighten an additional 45 degrees. Reinstall the suspension level control system back into place and tighten the hardware.
Continuing with the driver's side, place the sway bar end link into the sway bar and tighten the bolt to 40 foot-pounds. On the passenger side, place the drive axle into the hub assembly. Place the ball joint back into position in the control arm and tighten the bolt to 29 foot-pounds. Reinstall the suspension level control system back into place and tighten the hardware. Place the sway bar end link into the sway bar and tighten the bolt to 40 foot-pounds. On the driver's side, install the air duct followed by the lower front wheel housing liner. On the passenger side, install the axle bolt and torque to 147 foot-pounds while no load is on the bearing. Then tighten an additional 180 degrees. Install the splash guard. Install both passenger and driver tire and wheel assemblies and torque the lug nuts to 88 foot-pounds. Reconnect the ground and battery cable to the starter if not done already. Install the battery tray and secure the wiring harness. Tighten the battery tray bolts to 7 foot-pounds. Install the air intake hose and tighten the clamp. Place the battery in position and install the battery hold down bracket. Tighten the bolt to 11 foot-pounds. Install the protective sleeve over the battery. At this point you can reconnect the battery cables and tighten the nuts to 4 foot-pounds.
Install the air filter housing and connect the intake hose securing it with the clamp. Install the air guide upper section and then install the air intake housing cover. Install the engine cover. Connect the vacuum hose to the air filter housing. Thank you for watching. Support us by liking this video and for more content, check out our channel.